Hey yo, what up? It's your boy. I apologize if this video is a little bit delayed after my last upload. Pokemon happened. Alright. Over the past few days, I've been streaming a lot of Pokemon Violet here on the channel. If you're not able to make it to the live streams and you want to get caught up, consider becoming a channel member. All of my previous long form live streams are archived for channel members to view whenever they like, as well as enjoying other great benefits like custom streaming emotes, shout outs, and much, much more. All for as low as $3 a month. Liking my videos and subscribing are a fantastic way of showing your support, and this channel simply would not exist without your encouragement and engagement. To go that extra mile in showing your support, however, consider becoming a channel member. Links down in the description. Shameless plug aside, isn't the Fallout franchise kind of weird? Like, the game's universe is super interesting, it's been massively influential on the gaming landscape, but at the same time, it's also weirdly homogenous. Fallout 1 came out in October of 1997, a full three years after a game that would be the first brick to be laid upon the foundation of an absolutely unstoppable gaming juggernaut that to this day is synonymous with gaming itself. Warcraft, Orcs and Humans. Now to be completely fair though, comparing Fallout to Warcraft is like comparing apples to watermelons. One is compact and surprisingly dense, while the other is massive, sugary, and... I, 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 don't, I don't know. I, I'm, I'm sure I'll put something interesting and, and funny here that'll, that'll make this segment, you know, not drag and I'll have an actual joke ready for this. I'm sure of it. But follower Toshi never would come up with a joke to fill this part of the video, just as he would never see his home country of Australia ever again. For on the morning of January 13th, 1861, he would die alongside the rest of the Queen's 42nd Regiment defending the nobility from the heathenous and godless Belgians. My point is, though, that they are two different franchises with very different life paths, and while it will be disingenuous to judge them on equal footing, it is absolutely mind-blowing just how much extra content there is for Warcraft compared to Fallout, despite the games only being a few years apart, and both going strong to this day. Okay, let's see if I can do this in one breath. Warcraft has seven mainline games, counting the World of Warcraft, which itself has a total of eight expansion packs, a wildly popular spin-off games like Hearthstone and Heroes of the Storm, five tabletop games, 38 books, 10 comics, nine mangas, a freaking magazine, and even a short-lived card game. And I was able to do that all in one take, too, so, I mean, like, if that's not worth the subscribe, I don't know what is. Meanwhile, Fallout has four mainline games, four spin-off games, a pinball game, the Fallout New Vegas prequel comics All Roads, and three tabletop games. That's it. My point is that in all the time Fallout has been around, it never seemed interested in branching out into other mediums. That, however, would all change when our lord and savior Todd It Just Works, Howard, and the good folks at Bethesda revealed to the world that a television adaptation of the Fallout series was in production over at Amazon Studios. On a quick side note, does anyone else find it ironic that for all the anti-capitalist and big corporate hazard signs that the Fallout series likes to use, that it put the creation of the TV series in the hands of the largest company on the planet and the poster child for late stage capitalism? Regardless, what we currently know about the series mostly comes from a series of informational leaks that took place over the past couple of months, about the last year, as well as a plethora of leaked set images. We know that Walton Goggins is going to be our main lead role, and he will be playing a ghoul across the series, and will be joined alongside actress Ella Purnell. Beyond that, we know that actor Kyle MacLachlan and Aaron Monet will be playing key roles in the series as well, though information on their characters is currently not very detailed. We would also be graced with a bunch of pictures taken on set locations after shooting hours, as well as a few sneaky behind-the-scenes shots where we would get our first glimpses at part of the iconic suit of power armor, as well as shots that introduce us to Vault 33. Additionally, less circulated images would show an old army base building used for shooting, with characters resembling vault Tech scientists as well as Enclave soldiers. I mentioned this in my roundup video for Fallout's birthday month in October, but Bethesda would also give us a look at series director Jonathan Nolan on yet another set of the show, a destroyed neighborhood full of dilapidated buildings during their Beyond the Game video. The Amazon and Kilter Films Twitter account would also joint share an image from the show, depicting a vault dweller actually leaving Vault 33. 
To the best of my knowledge, this is where all the information stands on the Fallout series as of this video's upload. But not too long ago, I was made aware of something that I don't think I've seen many other people talking about. Funnily enough, it's a pretty important bit of information that's been literally right under our noses this whole time. The show's IMDB page. Heading over to the website, we can see that there is in fact a small blurb about the show, reading, As the Brotherhood of Steel invade the Vault City, it is the job or Mike and Elizabeth to rescue the citizens. Glossing over the typo there, this description gives us a really good beginning when theorizing what the series will be about. For starters, we have the characters of Mike and Elizabeth, who we can assume will be played by Goggins and Purnell respectively. A quick skim of the cast sheet also reveals that Aaron Monet will be playing a character named Maximus. So we know the first names of three of our four main cast members. Not too bad. Beyond just character names, we also have mention of Vault City, which to fans of the series will stand out as Vault City was an actual location we could visit in Fallout 2, a technologically advanced city-state comprised of current and former members of Vault 8 in the Northern California region. Looking a little further down the cast list, we also see an actor playing a role simply listed as Colonel. And while not specifically listed as such, it's pretty safe to assume that this role might very well be an Enclave officer. This idea can be further argued because when we look back at the pictures taken from set, we can very clearly see what would more closely resemble an Enclave soldier. Not to mention that the actor, Alareza Mermentazari, just looks built to play a high-ranking military official. Guy stacked six ways to Sunday. Mermentazari's mad games aside, having Enclave play a role in the series does make a lot of sense especially if Vault City is to play a central part of the story. This would also indicate that the overall plot of the show will be following a plot very similar to that of Fallout 2, as both Vault City and the Enclave play major roles over the course of the game. So that about wraps it up then, right? The Amazon series will be following in the steps of Fallout 2, introducing the Enclave as the primary antagonist against the player. <laughs> Sorry, Fallout's a video game series, so I'm way too used to saying player. A primary antagonist the main characters, Mike and Elizabeth, will be forced to contend with. Right? Well... If we look farther down towards the bottom of the IMDb cast list, we can see two very noteworthy roles. Actor Jace Wade playing Raider Leader, and radio personality Shefik playing Fiend Raider. This is a very telling bit of information as the two roles are specifically labeled as belonging to characters which themselves belong to two different factions. Noteworthy enough, though, is that one of those two raider factions is the same as one that exists in one of the games along the series, that game being Fallout New Vegas. During the events of New Vegas, we never really learn the origins of the fiends, but we do know that they are a decently sized group of chem-addicted raiders that have long been established in southwestern New Vegas based out of the ruins of Vault 3. Interacting with the Fiends in different ways will lead to one of eight endings for the faction, four of them resulting in the faction's extermination. This would indicate that, should Shefik be actually playing a Fiend, following the events of the game, the Fiends survived and traveled somewhere else, seeking more lucrative opportunities away from a New Vegas with constantly shifting politics. While we do not have confirmation on when the series will take place in the timeline, the existence of both the Fiends and potentially the Enclave is very telling, as by the time of Fallout New Vegas, the Enclave had been long since destroyed, at least as far as the public was aware. Even more so, looking back at the series description, we can see that it doesn't specifically refer to THE Vault City, but instead A Vault City. Assuming this isn't just another typo, this means that we can't definitively say that this is the same Vault City from Fallout 2. So what does this mean then? We're back to square one? Well, here's what I think the plot's gonna be. Goggins has been quoted with saying the series will take a lot of inspiration from Fallout 3 specifically, and we can see some of that inspiration not only in the layout of the vaults, but also the existence of the super duper marts on set. So here's what I think the plot's gonna be. Goggins, aka Mike, is a member of Vault 33, a control vault that is set to either never open or that did open, but the residents remain inside the vault, like Vault 81 in Fallout 4. The vault has experienced a major mechanical malfunction, such as a water purification system either failing or soon to fail, and Mike is chosen to venture out into the wasteland to track down either a former member of the vault who has gone missing, or somebody who currently stands as the only person who can fix their water problem. Along the way, Mike is exposed to enough radiation that it turns him into a ghoul, 
and either before or after, is brought to a city centered around a vault by a woman named Elizabeth. The city claiming that they will be able to assist Mike with his mission in exchange for helping them with a few things here and there. Side quest time. Mike, despite his situation, is still desperate to help his vault, and agrees to work with the city for a short while in exchange for their assistance. Over time, though, he grows weary of the constant presence of armed soldiers in black uniforms, and becomes more and more suspicious of the intentions of the higher-ups in the city. Eventually, Mike discovers that the city is actually being held under the control of a group known as the Enclave, who has been occupying the city in order to utilize their advanced technology to carry out experimentation on ghouls, which is something that we've seen the Enclave do on multiple occasions. In an attempt to save the people of Vault City from the control of the Enclave, Mike and Elizabeth either team up with, or inadvertently side with, the Brotherhood of Steel and carry out an offensive to liberate Vault City from Enclave control, as indicated in the series description. This wouldn't be just any Brotherhood faction, though. I believe this could very well be the return of the Midwest Brotherhood depicted in Fallout Tactics, the hidden gem of the Fallout franchise. With the presence of the Fiends in the series, we know that the show may very well be set after the end of Fallout New Vegas. Because of the Fiends' hostile relationship with the New California Republic, they would be reluctant to travel any further west of Nevada, and any further south or east would push them into territory controlled by Caesar's Legion. With that in mind, their best bet would be to travel northeast into Wyoming, putting them within spitting distance of, you guessed it, the Kansas-Colorado border, the main setting of Fallout Tactics. This, of course, is all highly speculative on my part, but based on what we know about the series thus far, and what we know about the history laid out in the games, I think it's a pretty solid plot. For the time being, though, until we get more information, or maybe even a trailer, this will be my personal headcanon. Whatever the plot may be, I will be covering each and every episode of the Amazon series as it comes out, or as a whole if it drops all at once. We'll see how that turns out. To be honest, even if I'm completely wrong, I'm still 100% stoked for the new series. I can't wait to see a super mutant or a deathclaw ominously stomp into frame, and I hope that we get to see new creatures no matter where the series takes us. What would you like to see most from the upcoming Fallout series? A new faction? Lore expansions? New monsters? Let me know down in the comments below. For now though, I thank you so much for watching, like and subscribe and stuff, become a member today, and I will see you all out there in the wasteland.